The following video was recorded in June 2020 as part of our virtual open day. The information in the video was correct at the time of recording. For more information on these programs, to arrange a one-to-one -one discussion with a member of the team, or to apply online, please visit newbury-college.ac.uk. Hi. Well, thanks very much. So I'm James Ross from uh, Course Leader Sport. Been here about 15 years now, so quite a long time. <clears throat> All these days, talk about uh, the course in general, talk about Newbury College, how it's like different from school, and how it's uh, pretty decent at getting where you want to go in life. So I go through the PowerPoint now. So first of all, Newbury College, different from school. Um, you probably see that straight away when you come to college. If you had a look around, it looked look pretty decent. Um, we look at more about your career rather than just passing the course. When you go to school, it's fantastic. It's really good. I went to school. Uh, A-levels are fantastic, but this is also slightly different. It goes towards your career rather than just passing your course. So if you really want to do something really good for your life and know exactly what you want to do, or just want to experience different things, it's definitely a way forward. So why do you be college? Well, different things. <clears throat> As I said before, it's progression focused, subjects based on your chosen career. So everything you do is all about what you want to do. For example, uh, I wanted always mad about sport from an early age. And I definitely want to do this as a sport. But at school, I couldn't do uh, that much stuff. I only do maths and sociology, uh, which is not exactly sport. But at college, you can do everything associated with sport. Um, there's no other things. You've also got to pass the English and maths, because what I'm saying, you've got a chance to do that. But you do everything associated with sport, and all different things, we've been looking at health and fitness, about fitness testing, about the actual playing the sport and all sorts. It's just about sport. Um, yeah, career focus objectives, we get towards um, your career. Um, employer led, that basically means that uh, we talk to employers, I have good contacts with the employers, a local industry, local area, and all sorts, and find out what they want. So we can change the course to satisfy what the employers actually want, uh, which is really important because there's no point getting really qualified in one thing and then going to employers and getting something completely different. And they say, oh, great, can you do this though? Oh, no, I didn't learn that. Well, no, rubbish. We look at what employees actually want um, and actually change the course to satisfy their needs. Um, skill based, there are a few exams. It's all it's quite practical. The assessment methods, the good thing about the BTEC is we can uh, assess you how we think you should be assessed. For example, some things need exams, some things don't. For example, like if you're doing coaching, you can't just sit down and write an exam on coaching. You've got to actually go and coach. So we assess you by doing that. You look at um, you actually do sort of practice sessions and uh, takes war groups and we look and assess you, we do real analysis and that sort of stuff to make sure you can actually coach and we assess you on the hoof that way. Um, other things as well like presentations. We find people who do sport are usually quite outgoing and like talking quite a lot. They don't really like writing that much, but it's fine. So you do have to write occasionally of course, but if you're good at pres presenting stuff, you can do a presentation and we can assess you on that. Now, college progression versus six forms. They say, I say six forms, yeah, pretty decent. You can do all sorts in there. Um, with college, though, you've also got um, different avenues as well you go into. The apprenticeships you go into, the apprenticeships can happen after college as well. And you go to high apprenticeships, university, and all sorts. So, progression is really, really good. Um, lots of people come through us and naturally go to university. That is a natural progression for certain uh, jobs, for example, teaching, um, we've got sports analysts, that sort of stuff as well. Um, university is a natural progression and we are very, very good at getting people towards the right university, the right courses. Also, because it's an L3 course, you can actually do a different um, subject at university than you would be used to. For example, you can do sport and do very, very well in that, get really high grades, and then decide to do something completely different at university. And that can work quite well. For example, a few years ago, someone decided, yeah, sport's fantastic, I like doing that. However, I want to try something else. He went to university, did business, and now very successful doing that. Brilliant, fantastic. Yeah, I'll let down my um, a bit there. That presentation is quite good. So the course itself, now the course is in 14 modules over two years. It's called Extended Diploma in Sport. Um, first year we focus on mainly um, technical type stuff, the natural physiology, um, the fitness testing, that sort of stuff. And the second year, more, more practical stuff that eases you straight into uh, edu or, uh, employment or further education. Um, we've got Difficult modules the second year, we've got things like business, we've got like organising sports events, lots of really practical stuff that actually gets you to where you want to go to. The, the careers you can get from this 
are varied. Yet we got people who go to um, in sports analysts, we've got football coaches, what uh, P teachers, and all sorts really. So you've got different um, things there, you've got natural physiology, fitness testing, sports coaching, sports nutrition is a big one these days, um, both because of the um, athletes need to have the nutrition to do their um, sport, but also now that there's a big issue now with looking at obesity um, sport and also a wider context in the whole um, the whole medical um, environment. Um, nutrition is a big thing. Sports injuries, obviously people get injured from time to time, you can't really help that. But the key thing now is prevention of injuries rather than actually treating them. If you can say to um, a football club, a professional football club, I can stop your players getting injured, that's a huge thing. It's also the less sexy side of um, physiotherapy saying, oh, we're getting injuries, you can actually see anything. But if you can prevent injury, you're absolutely laughing. For example, you go to a professional athlete and they can get paid, say, £100,000, £200,000 per week. If you can say to them, I can stop and get injured, basically giving the football club £100,000 per week because they are now active and rather than not being active. <clears throat> Psychology, massive on this is. This basically ties in all the different aspects of the sport course because no matter what you are, you need some of the psychology aspects. For example, personal training. What motivates your client to doing more exercise? You've got to find out what they want, what they need, and that's all about psychology. Also, the fact that at the highest level of the sport, the difference between Lionel Messi and someone that also ran in the Premier League <clears throat> is psychology. What's going on in their head? What's the motivations are? How much can they actually do stuff? And what's the difference between these people? We can find that out and help these people. Uniform equipment. So we need obviously the standard equipment. You've got to bring a pen, pad, that sort of stuff to um, a course all the time. Also, you've got textbooks. The textbooks are really good. Also, you need the actual white stuff to look the part. It's very, very important when you're doing practical sports and especially sports coaching, you look like you're presenting a good image out to your um, players and coaches. Um, if you turn up on any old stuff, you don't look very good and straight away you haven't got respect from your players. You need to look like you're a professional coach. We are very active. We don't like just sitting inside all the time. Um, as sports people, we like being outside and doing stuff. So we go on loads and loads of trips. The reasons for this, for example, you can see right here, we've got like uh, the Rose Bowl here and Twickenham been there in the past. The Rose Bowl, we get investigate different kinds of sports now things like 20 cricket and the hundreds coming up quite soon but people's the old-fashioned view of cricket is oh, it's really boring walk around and stuff like that and you say to people what do you think cricket arts boring okay we've been well no okay well let's go there experience it and people will go there find out it's oh, completely different what I expected um tricking for example we go to different kind of things there we go to the day mail uh, under 18s cup um looking at how the under 18s actually the highest level of sports operate and we can do sports analysis there. We can look at the actual players and mark down how good they are, kind of analysing what their performance is and that sort of stuff. But also karting as well, and karting is a big one because quite close to here is quite a lot of F1 teams. Now every F1 driver has their own personal trainer because the demands on F1 are extreme. The body goes through a huge amount and they need to be extremely fit. This was first done by Michael Schumacher, who's the first driver to come out and concentrate really, really hard on his fitness and worked out if you are incredibly fit then you are an advantage to the other drivers now all these drivers will need a personal trainer and there's something we can do as well and also thing like well no driving is not difficult we actually go experience it we go to do it karting and find out actually yeah that's really really hard work and after doing like 10 laps very very tired even though people doing it start off with are actually quite fit so we to put ourselves through the extra thing itself to find out what it's like in real life now, how do we assess this? I said before, written assignments are the main way we get assessed. <clears throat> you do an assignment based on the assignment uh, on the work, and you complete stuff or done online. Uh, gone the days now. We have bits of paper floating around. Everything else contained online. We have something called Moodle, which is a virtual learning environment. We can do the assignments, type everything up, and hand like the in straight in on your computer. I can then mark it, make just any tweaks and sort of stuff, and get back to you. Everything is online, so nothing's getting lost. Um, we can also hand in different things as well. And also it's only things contained in the computer so you can find out exactly when it's hand in by, how many days in that sort. So you can organize yourself really, really well. Logbook's very, very important. Um, one of the most important things in coaching is self-reflection. How can I get better? All the time you think, okay, I've done a good session here. I've taught these 
under 13s netball team really good but what went really well and what things can i get better every time you do that you write down a logbook you think okay this went well this went better this will be better the next time and constant improvement all the time is a way forward as i mentioned before some people in sport are very good presenting <coughs> they can actually talk really well to the camera they can actually vocalize quite well and you can present and that's a good way of um actually getting your knowledge across there discussions whilst we want your opinions on certain things sport is highly controversial all the time and lots of things going on all the time especially now with the coronavirus and that sort of stuff how things go on how things move forward discussions are very, very important i'm really interested in your point of view and you can actually assess people with that as well so we sit around to have a, a discussion we can videotape that uh, we can put, st put stuff there and we can assess you on your discussion online quizzes are quite good as well online quizzes you, again online you can fill stuff in we have lots of different things on there and of course demonstrations as well if you've got to demonstrate a sport you actually go and do it and we can assess you that way <coughs> now how do you progress on to the, the perfect thing first of all you start at level two you can sport and sport level two here combines both public services and sport you can do a few things on here you can do like there's an assistant lifeguard Output assistant and steward right there. Okay, decent salary can be okay. But the best thing in level two is go to level three. If you get to level three, all, all the avenues open up quite a lot. You see all the different um, jobs you can get from there. Decent salary. Um, you can get to obviously public services and sport here, a two year course at level three. And so, key thing up there, UCAS points are available. You can go to university doing any sport, you, any course you want, really. Not have to be in sport, can be anything. The best thing, of course, though, you go up from there to higher education university. University, the key things there, you go to things like PE teacher. If you want a PE teacher, you do a three year um, degree and they can do a PhD afterwards to top you up to a um, actual BP teacher. Um, loads of different things on there and you earn stuff from there goes absolutely through the roof. Loads of people come through us and go on to university and do some very successful careers. And the best thing about this job is getting ex students come back and just say like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing this now. I'm, I'm now at University of Surrey being a lecturer. I'm now in America doing sports analysts. That's a couple of examples there. And saying how much actually helped them and how much you know, going to school was good, but going to college even better because it really focused on what they want to do. And that was it's really nice to hear that sometimes when students come back. So how can help? No matter what your needs are, we can actually help you and get you through to achieve the best possible desire. Um, we always have loads of learning support here. So no matter what your um, needs are, we can cater for them. We can, yeah, where, where you want to go to, we can actually get you to the right place. If you want to go to a PE teacher, you want to go to a sports analyst, if you want to go to a fitness coach, we can get you there. Health and wellbeing advice, um, it is stressful. This level course is very, very difficult. Um, level two is tricky. Level three is, it is really quite hard, but we give you loads of support, loads of advice to help you through this course. OK, um, you will find sometimes that you find, oh, I can't carry on. It's really difficult. There's got to be assignments, but we can tackle th these things, break it all down and help you through the course. Good financial support here. Um, you can have um, help with your meals. Childcare costs which are obviously quite important sometimes, and of course, free travel. You can get a free college bus up to college, so it's obviously walking down the hill all the time. Careers advice is very important. We have a good careers advice team that can, again, the most important thing is going towards the best possible career. And of course, the university applications. I've personally been to university, I thought it was a fantastic time. I know how to get there, and also got a dedicated team as well to making sure you select the right university and then how to apply for this and how to fill out the form in the best possible way. Any more questions? That's what you were just right there. So any questions you have at all, you can think of right now, or you, know, you can't think of right now. Later on, you can email across, and I get back to you very, very quickly. So any questions now? We have to uh, ask them. Thank you very much, James. I'm just going to send you live again. We do have a few questions for you. Okay. Um, so uh, Levi's asked: Is there a lot of science in this course? Not a huge amount. Um, natural physiology is obviously a big part of the course, um, but the science you have, I mean, science at school is all about technical stuff, but it's more, more realistic. So, for example, like uh, it's how the bones work, how the muscles work. Um, you can see things actually happening rather than the all theoretical stuff. Um, we're taking out, so they say it's in what natural physiology, you've got uh, uh, sports nutrition, which does some sort of scientific stuff in there, but it's not nitty gritty stuff, it's all things you actually see. 
So some people get turned off by the science stuff. Some people actually love the science stuff. Both be happy with this. But it's all relevant to what you would need for your career progression anyway. Yeah, so it's a key thing really. I mean, what we go to, we can make more scientific, less scientific. It's all, it could be up to you. The good thing about this course is quite flexible. Fantastic. Um, and Tyler has asked, can can you do this course with a physical disability? Absolutely. We've had loads of people with physical disabilities come through the course. Physical, um, well, Paralympic sport has, has taken off so much um, and it's very important to you know, cater for all sorts of people here. Um, no matter what your physical disability is, we can actually cater for you. And it's a big, big growth area. And I saw like 2012 Paralympics are actually fantastic. And watching those people is incredible. And it's such a huge growth area. So people with able-bodied and with physical needs both get something out of the course and both will study uh, physical disabled sport. Fantastic. Thank you, James. And we have um, uh, another question. Can I be a professional footballer whilst doing this course? After doing this course, sorry. <laughs> um, being a professional footballer is obviously a very hard thing to do. And if you're highly skilled at football, it's definitely a, a dream worth pursuing. But it's always very, very good to have a backup plan. If you were to do um, football in the academy, you would always get through a qualification as well. It's a weird fact that three out of five professional footballers actually end up bankrupt. So even if you make it, there's no guarantee you just live that for the rest of your life. You do need something else to go on. So if you are very good at football, absolutely keep playing it and, pl and train as hard as possibly can. But you definitely got to do this course as well alongside it. We have got some very good footballers come through, of course. Um, Stefan came here a few years ago. He set a record, um, the FA Cup, the fastest ever hat trick in the FA Cup. Um, Fantastic. Yes, we didn't play. He was. Um, also, you see, he went on this course, and I've got a second thing. He had to concentrate on um, other things as well. So he's concentrating his career and his football at the same time, which is obviously this course gives you. Fantastic. Um, and we do have um, one final question. Um, what kind of careers um, could I choose after I've done this course? Huge different careers out there. I mean, sport is a multi-billion pound industry and lots of things associated with that. The main ones I'll say is going through PE teacher, being a sports coach. Uh, um, those are the main ones really. Fitness instruction is a good one as well. And obviously fitness consultants, basically personal training is a good growth area. But the key thing is now, personal training is changed now from the traditional type, which people are just getting someone to like help pedal at them and go in faster. Now it's a case of people who have got something slightly wrong with them, say like a heart condition or any sort of medical needs, they can go to the doctor and get prescribed exercise. And that's where you come in. You can actually get the people to actually exercise a lot more, which is far better for them than throwing drugs at them. And these that's people are you know, far more, far get more receptive to that than maybe else really. That sounds brilliant. OK, thank you very much, James. I'm going to give you a break from the screen. Mm -hmm. Just want to thank James once again and thank you all for attending this live event. Don't forget to check out our website for times of other sessions that you might be interested in um, or you can watch again on this URL for any time. Um, also, you can apply online for sport uh, through the website newbury-college.ac.uk. Um, the direct link to the sports course is just in the Q&A um, and also contact us for a one-to-one -one discussion at any time with the member of the team. Thank you very much. We look forward to welcoming you in September and see you again soon.